In this video guys, I bring you 7 insanely OP weapons you need to be using after the latest 1.03.2 patch. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leave a like, it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So today we have 7 amazing weapons you need to be considering. So let's go people. Okay, so first up we have the Envoy's Longhorn. Now this is a weapon I already dedicated a build to, because as soon as I saw this thing I knew that had to happen. And well guys, even without a build, this thing is truly hits like a truck. Now the Envoy's Long Horn is one of a family of horn weapons, but this is by far the best of the three. It scales with strength, dexterity and faith, and it obviously does that holy damage, and it comes in seriously good here. Do what you can to buff this thing's holy damage truly makes it one of the best weapons in the game. Now it drops from the medium sized envoys which can easily be farmed within the Halley Tree area. There's four of the said enemy which you can farm within a minute of landing in at the Halley Tree Canopy Grace Point. I will say, things that assist this are for sure the Envoy Crown which also increases the damage of those bubble based attacks. Also the Charlevags and the Talisman is one great talisman to use with this thing. But hey, like I said, if you need ideas, my build video will be linked below along with other videos that show exactly how this thing can be farmed. So check them out if you're interested in this one. Okay, so next up people, we have the God Skin Peeler. So this is a weapon I have been using for a while now. I first saw a build of this quite a while back on TikTok. Uh, it was paired with another twin blade and man, oh man, it was brutal. Now I actually covered this before I saw it on TikTok uh, on a video here within the first week of the game's release, but it seems to have gotten even crazier with what else has been found, which adds on to this thing's destruction. So this weapon is obtained from the God Skin Apostle within the Windmill Village area right at the peak. It's a fun fight but the reward is even better. Now although this weapon has a great special attack, a great uh, weapon skill in its black flame tornado, what makes this thing even more unique is the fact you can indeed add a Nash of War of your own to this thing, making it very customizable. That means guys you can put that Sapuku Ash of War on this activate it and this thing gets to work better than most things I've seen in the game, contending maybe even with the rivers of blood. It attacks extremely quickly, its run charge light and heavy attacks while in that two handed mode wreck most things and must land about 4 or 5 attacks, it's that crazy. And with a decent arcane stat value you will see this thing and its blood loss at around 135 or even higher. Pair this with a load of blood exaltation talisman and it gets even wilder guys. But hey, there's even more. If you dual wield this with another weapon, another twin blade, you can do some seriously, seriously crazy things. I paired this with the Eliana's pole blade, which also does bleed build up as well as having fire damage on it. I applied the Claw Talisman to that. Also having the Raptor's Black Feathers chest piece, both increase uh, mid-air attack. So if you jump and attack with this thing, it, it like hits four times in quick succession without our one left bomb for attack. While in midair, it does remarkable damage, guys. You can land then into another combo, dealing even more damage. It is utterly brutal. Add the Rat on Wing Sword Talisman into the mix, and it gets even crazier. While you're there, go through on the White Mask, and that adds attack power to your build when there's blood loss nearby. Combined in all of that, guys, and you have one of the best weapons in the game, one of the best builds in the game. And if you want to find out more about that build, the one I just talked about, you'll find it linked down below. Next up, guys, you have the Glintstone Peril Ash of War on a Clayman's Magic Harpoon. Now, this is something I kind of came up with myself. The Ash of War was already known about for being a monster with that stagger ability, but applying it to a weapon which scaled it further was always going to be key. The result, a weapon which staggers most enemies in the game, including some bosses, it is unreal. Now, smaller to medium enemies, it puts them on the spot, being constantly hit over and over in a position of just taking damage and not really being able to do much about it. Larger enemies see less of this soft stagger, but will easily be heavy staggered in a position to let you land that crit shot in less than six shots at most. 
when chucking out that glint stone pebble ash of war now i've made a build on this weapon and ash of war uh, which you'll find a link below if you're interested in how it all fits together and works the weapon itself requires 12 strength 10 dex and 12 intelligence and it's very very easy to farm now i've used this for about two or three days straight now and to those single target enemies and larger bosses and unsuspected foes this is one of the most op things in the game right now again guys my build which guides you through everything needed here to make this thing op you'll find linked down below okay so next up people we have the wings of astel so this weapon is another one i've previously covered and it's found within the seal for the river area above a bus which can easily be avoided for you to grab this thing again full guide into getting this weapon you'll find a link down below so to rock this weapon you need to have 7 in strength 7 in dexterity and 20 in that intelligence its weapon art skill is called nebula and this guys is just utterly crazy in regards to how powerful this is you get under a larger target or surrounded by a bunch of ads you pull this thing off and it's lights out for them now it isn't the fact that the cloud of dust explodes multiple times each explosion doing its own amount of tick damage it's the fact of how quick you can actually spam this attack out it's utterly brutal but it gets wilder this weapon you can also fire out projectiles using that heavy attack press it once to fire out a single projectile hold it to unleash two projectiles this is truly one of the best weapons i've used of recent and if you do enjoy a curved sword want to spend some intellect and enjoy a great show this weapon is 100 for you next up guys is a weapon you probably all knew was going to be here or expected to be here and i just can't leave it out the rivers of blood now where do i even start with this thing well since the patch which fixed arcane scaling i think most who have used this will agree this thing is a little on the broken side not a term i use lightly so this weapon comes from an npc invader within the mountain tops of the giants known as the bloody finger or kina kill him and you get his mask and this katana but be careful though if you progress past the mountain tops of the giants and onto the dragon temple before getting this thing i'm afraid you've missed out on it and will have to wait until new game plus or have a friend dupe it for you it's what i did guys i went past the place where this guy spawns in and invade you i went straight onto the fire giant killed him progressed onto the dragon temple not realizing i messed up my chance in getting it for myself so the requirements for this thing are 12 in strength 18 in dexterity and 20 in arcane so what makes this thing so brutal you may be wondering if you don't know well to start bleed builds in this game alone are some of the best builds due to what can be achieved with the equipment you can find and add on to said builds I'd probably say the best at this point and I'd probably say although I don't want it from software may even drop a slight nerf to them I think we all are thinking that we don't want it to happen but I think we all know it's coming so we have this thing's weapon art skill the corpse piler that's exactly what this thing does it just brutally tears through most things with a flurry of attacks which has a better range and an area of effect than you'd think just by looking at it and while then guys you can just dual wield it with another katana to unlock that double move set of just slashing through enemies like there's no tomorrow if you are lucky enough to have two rivers of blood katanas then good for you but pairing this with a katana like the standard one on the samurai apply that seppuku to that katana dual wield them have the uchi katana in your left hand two hand it use that seppuku ash of war go back into dual wielding mode gain that extra damage pair this with a couple of talismans like the shard of alexander the lord of blood's exaltation and the many other things that buff this thing and bleed builds and while you're just left with at the moment one of the best weapons in the game i'd probably say at this point it's untouchable but hey the rivers of blood we just couldn't leave it out okay so next up guys we have the war cry and bloody hellis combo now this one starts with a bloody hellis a weapon which is super easy to get which is a thrusting heavy sword which hits real hard and can be extremely useful but when you combo it up with a war cry ash of war or in fact a weapon which has the war cry up already built into it like many axes and great axes we see something amazing happens so the bloody hellish requires 16 in strength 19 in dex and 17 in arcane i also think this may have benefited from the arcane fix although i didn't try it beforehand so i can't confirm that so this is what you do and this is how you make this thing work and how you make it extremely overpowered by using like i said a war cry weapon paired with a bloody hellis so firstly with a weapon with that war cry weapon skill on it either via ash of war 
which if you don't know where that is by the way guys i'll link it down below so having said weapon in your right hand with that actual war skill on it wield it then activate that actual war war cry what this does it changes a weapon's heavy attack to a kind of run charge uppercut and that's where this thing gets overpowered so with the bloody hellish in your left hand the war cry ash of war weapon in your right hand activate that war cry ash of war then simply guys two hand the bloody hellish by either holding e on pc triangle on playstation and y on xbox and pressing your left mouse button on pc and your left trigger on both consoles you will now be in that two-handed bloody hellish mode now if you press that heavy attack button guys your bloody hellish heavy attack is overwritten with a war cry one and this results in a good few seconds of one of the most powerful attacks possible in this game keep in mind every instance of this animation seems to do damage so the run charge and swing uppercut all do damage so it's best to get as close as possible to an enemy for maximum effect and damage now i don't think this is intended but either way as of right now it is a brutal brutal weapon so enjoy it while you can guys okay so lastly today guys we have the blasphemous blade now this weapon is received via trading Rykard's Remembrance with two fingers within the round table. Rykard is obviously the main boss from Volcano Manor. So I'll do that quest guys at Volcano Manor. Get this uh, Remembrance, take it to two fingers within the round table and get this weapon people. It is absolutely incredible. So this weapon requires uh, 22 in strength, 15 in dexterity and 21 in faith. Its special uh, weapon skill is called Taker's Flames. Now, what's actually happened with this, and I don't think many people realize it is, this weapon pre-patch used to give you a portion of your health back upon you killing an enemy. Well, that's now changed. You only have to hit an enemy to get that health back. Yes, you heard that right, and it's a big portion too. You hit an enemy with this thing's uh, weapon skill, its weapon art skill, you get your health back not all of it but a big chunk of it the best thing about it guys is you can spam out that attack now it does cost uh, 30 fp points so you have to be cautious there but either way it does hit like an absolute truck if you set this up right i've already based a build on this as well which again you'll find linked down below i play it with many many things which buff these things uh because obviously it does that physical damage as well as that fire damage so things that buff fire damage are absolutely incredible on this thing talismans like the fire scorpion charm you can also have the uh the flame shroud and crack tier apply that mix to your flask and you are good to go now this isn't the most powerful weapon in today's uh video but the way in which this does hit like a truck it is super powerful but it's also at the same time gives you back your health makes it one of the most efficient i have covered today without a shadow of a doubt and for those of you out there who have faith builds this is one i would recommend you at least trying because in my opinion right now i believe this thing is seriously underrated and not that many people are actually using it or even know about it and know how brutal this thing can be B. the range and its taker's flame skill as well guys is utterly incredible if enemies are lined up in front of you it just takes them all out it wipes them all out on bosses as well guys it does stagger them pretty harshly and like i said because you can spam this thing so quickly it is a great and fun weapon to use like i said you're gaining your health back every time you hit an enemy with this weapon so if you're spamming a boss you are loaded up on faith have a seal on at the same time again allowing you to boost that fire damage things like the flame grant me strength even a golden vow may work and help you out here as well guys i mean the possibilities are endless with this thing so yes guys if you are into that faith and you do need a decent weapon this one will not let you down you mark my words and there we have it guys seven incredible weapons that you need to check out Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more out of ring, be sure to subscribe and hopefully my beautiful people, I will see you on that next one.